Good morning, guys. So, we're going to talk a little bit about super caps in car audio. And uh, I want to make it clear right off the bat what we're talking about. What we're talking about are things like these guys. The Maxwells. There's a few other name brands out there. Even these uh, right here. These are super caps. Uh, so, what we're not talking about are these. Okay, these things are a totally different animal. They do have a use case, but uh, these are actually real capacitors, but we're not talking about those either. That's kind of advanced. These guys, they're all uh, totally not what I'm talking about today. So we're talking about these guys. And uh, you get them different name brands and whatnot, but they're all essentially the same so uh, what happens is you uh, if you watched my video about uh, alternators or batteries should I get a high alternator or batteries and my answer is yes well if you consider the chain of action between your alternator and your battery uh, the the alternator can provide power continuously, but not quickly. And that creates a problem. So when you get your headlights dimming, um, it's because the uh, power required for the base hit is more than what the alternator can provide instantly, right? It's, it's taxing the battery, and then uh, the alternator is catching up. So in the meantime, after that, that base hit pulls power from the battery before the alternator is able to put power back into the battery you'll see the headlights dim this happens with incandescent bulbs it's just a thing when you lower the voltage on an incandescent bulb it gets dimmer and so for a split second the voltage is lowered therefore the headlights dim what can fix that problem is ridiculous amounts of storage like you know, whole lot of uh, AGM batteries will soften it quite a bit. It's always still going to be a little bit of a pulse, though. Well, what does fix the problem is capacitors, like these guys, or these guys. And the reason is a capacitor uh, works like a battery in that it stores energy, but it can take in energy virtually instantly and then release it virtually instantly. So whenever the uh, base hits, the capacitor dumps power into the amplifier and that buffers the power coming out of the battery so the battery doesn't feel the instant hit because the capacitor is absorbing that instant hit and then the alternator can pick up. So the capacitor gives the amp what it wants, the battery builds back up the capacitor and the alternator builds back up the battery. The three of those in unison create a system that the voltage stays very stable on and doesn't have uh, headlight dimming issues and also gives you nice snappy bass response. Now, going back to these guys. They do have a place in car audio, but it's not for what everyone thinks it's for. And they're a completely different beast. Yes, they are a capacitor. And they do look cool. And that's really probably their primary place is looking cool. Uh, with the voltmeter on them and all that, you know, they mount easy. They're easy to wire in and everything, and they look cool. But uh, they will actually give you a slightly higher dynamic uh, power uh, reading. So... You know, if you're if you're uh, say your uh, amplifier, your subwoofer amplifier is is popping out, or actually I wouldn't even put it on a subwoofer amplifier per se. But let's say your your amplifier, whatever it is, is kicking out 500 watts at you know at one ohm. Uh, and then when you run it on dynamic, if you run a dynamic test on it, it puts out 500 and say 25 watts. Running one of these little capacitors in that circuit. Uh, on dynamic power, you'd kick it up to probably 550, 575 watts. And the reason, maybe not quite that much, it'd probably be closer to 550. But 
The reason is is because it charges instantly and discharges instantly, like its big brothers, the super caps. But um, it can't provide power for more than a split second. But that split second is all you need to get that dynamic burst. So all it takes for a drum beat to hit is boom, a split second. And that boom is uh, your dynamic burst. So it can provide a little bit of a kick on top for those snappy uh, split second hits. Now for a bass note, no, it ain't gonna do crap. It's it's gonna die the very first tiny pulse of that bass note is gonna drain it and it won't it won't do nothing. But for kick drums and uh, and drum no, drum hits and things like that, it will clean those up a little bit. So there is a place for them. However, these guys will do the same thing. And these guys will also support your bass notes. These guys hold a lot more power. They discharge and uh, charge just as fast as the little little dudes do. And they can, uh, they can actually do stuff like start your car. This thing right here would start your car all by itself. It could run your whole car. Um, they they have a, a good amount of storage in them. Not compared to a battery, but compared to those little guys, they have a lot. You know, that thing would probably start your car five or six times or ten times before you had to stop and recharge it. Pretty impressive. So this solves both problems. This gives you storage, a storage solution. Also, it gives you the snappiness of capacitors. So the way you'd wire this in is you would... Uh, have your amp hooked up to the capacitor and then the capacitor run to the battery and then the battery you of course run into the alternator so you'd have the capacitor as close to the amplifier as you can get it and that will be softening the blow to the battery and the battery would be softening the blow to the alternator the three of them in unison make the perfect storm now one thing to remember about uh, capacitors are some things to remember one it is an instant source of power. So if you have this thing charged up, right, and you dropped a wrench across these terminals right here, the wrench and the wrench would just about explode. I mean it would it would turn to molten uh, molten uh, pieces of wrench would fly in, in, in multiple directions. It, there's so much power able to be put out as so quickly that shorting these two terminals across these, these two terminals will unload all the power instantly, right? So keeping that in mind, wherever you put this thing at, you do not want these terminals on the top or the bottom or anywhere to short out to ground. If those two bars right there, if those two bars ever come into contact with each other, you're going to unload a ton of power in a split second. And, uh, and they will hold that charge for years and years and years. If you charge up a capacitor and tow it in the closet and pull it out 20 years later, it's still going to have 99% of its charge. So... As long as they're handled carefully and encased in something that keeps them safe, keeps them from shorting out and, and uh, stuff, uh, they're safe. They're not, they're not affected by the cold. They're not affected by the heat. You know, they don't care. The voltage is, is a pretty wide screen. You can, you can uh, run the voltage up you know, like 17 volts, I think, on these. Uh, so they'll take, and they don't care about being low voltage either. You can drain them all the way down. They can sit there with no power in them and be totally fine. They don't care about any of those things. Uh, there is a maximum voltage, but it's pretty high. It's like 17 volts. Um, but there's no minimum voltage, so it doesn't, it doesn't care. You don't have to keep it within a certain voltage like a, like a battery. It acts like a shock absorber for the battery. It's basically all it is. So you guys are wanting something to help stiffen up your electrical system. Uh, these things will do a wonder, wonderful world of good. And the good thing about capacitors are since they don't care about the voltage too much, 
you could run these on your 12 volt system and then if you ever upgraded your system to where you were doing 14 and a half volts or whatever they would just just do that they don't care um, now the bad thing is they do have a price tag so there are less expensive versions of them now these maxwells do have a little uh little balancer in here i think that's what that is uh yeah i'm pretty sure that's what that is uh not really sure but they do have some electronics to them they're not just bus bars and uh and cells uh the maxwell packs and then there's uh so there's other manufacturers that are basically rebranding these maxwell maxwell cells if you want one of these just Go the cheapest route you can and get the Maxwell cells. You know, don't don't buy them for the brand name. Uh, buy for the equipment you're getting, because your other manufacturers are simply taking shrink wrap and putting it over the top of this Maxwell cell and selling it as their own and marking it up in price. Now, from what I understand, they do go through and test the the capacitors and. And uh, get you know the best of the best of all of them, and that's what they're selling. But they're but they're marking up, uh, marking up the price quite a bit to to slap their name on it. So capacitors are where it's at if you're wanting to stabilize your voltage. If you're having dimming headlights, this is the capacitor we're talking about, not those on the other page. These guys, they're two totally different beasts. And they have totally different jobs, and uh, they come in at different prices. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. If it was, be sure and hit that subscribe button, and y'all have a wonderful day. Peace!